In the OET writing test, your task is to read through a set of case notes which will look like this. Then you'll write a letter addressed to another healthcare professional which will either refer, transfer, or discharge a patient who needs further management of their condition. What's important to remember about the OET writing exam is that it tests your reading skills as much as your writing skills. Learning how to effectively read through and analyze case notes, like what you're seeing here on the screen, is crucial for getting a high score on test day. My name's Natasha, and in this video, I'm going to teach you how to analyze a set of OET case notes and how to use that information to write your OET formal letter. Let's begin by looking at the instructions. As you can see here at the top of the case notes, you have five minutes for reading and another 40 minutes to complete your letter. You can also see that for this specific task, you will be writing this letter as a school nurse and your patient in this case is a six-year-old child. Now, here's an important tip. Before reading further, the best thing to do is to go straight to the end of the exam paper and look at the writing task. This is because there are certain details in the task that we need to keep in mind before reading the rest of the notes. So let's do that. Our task says, using the information in the case notes, write a letter of referral to Jonathan's GP, Dr. Gregory, to request his intervention. Address the letter to Dr. Gregory, Health Clinic, Adalong 3538. After that, this last part is the same for every OET writing test. It says, in your letter, expand the relevant case notes into complete sentences. Do not use note form, use letter form. So remember, reading the task first helps us focus on who we are writing to and what we are asking them to do. As you can see here, the reader of your letter will be Dr. Gregory, who is this child's GP or family doctor. And we are requesting intervention. We also notice the address here. We will need to put the address in the top left corner at the very beginning of our letter. Now, if you think about it, intervention is a very general term. At this point, it is not very clear what that is exactly. We will understand more of the bigger picture when we read the rest of the notes. And this is what we need to do next. Start reading the notes from the beginning to understand the details about this boy and why we are writing to his GP. So back at the beginning of the case notes, we can see today's date and the patient's name, Jonathan Franks, and his age. We will put these details into the subject line of our letter. We then find the mother's name and their home address. But let's think about whether these details will go into our letter. The way we think about it is by remembering who we are writing to. We're writing to the boy's GP who most probably has the boy's address, so we will not include it in our letter. Next in the notes, we find current medical issue. This is the actual reason why the boy was sent to the nurse by his teacher. Discharge from left ear earache. After that, we find his social background. The boy lives with his single mother who is 22 years old, no contact with father, and other details. Again, remembering who will read our letter, we will not need to use these details because the boy's GP should be familiar with his situation. As we read through the medical history, let's try and decide which details will be relevant. As a baby, feeding problems. This is probably not relevant to the present times. Between six months and five years old, frequent otitis media. This is relevant because the boy has an earache right now, so it's a recurrent issue. Then there are two hospital admissions with acute gastroenteritis in 2013 and 2016. This may or may not be significant, so we'll have to make a decision later when reading the treatment plan or request details. So what we are doing when studying the case notes is a kind of selective reading. We want to select the details that will be relevant for a letter, and we also want to identify any details that are not relevant. This is what the exam is testing. 
your ability to choose appropriate information. So we must read with purpose, with the overall understanding of what the letter should focus on. Let's continue reading these notes. Under recent medical history, here we see that the child has the same problem two months ago. He was prescribed antibiotics. You can see here that the nurse followed up, but the mother forgot to give him the entire course of the medication. We also have information about how these health issues are affecting the boy's academic progress. Frequent periods of inattention in class, learning difficulties, hearing difficulties, often tired arriving at school. Remember, we're writing to the boy's GP and we are requesting intervention. But what are the exact details of our request? Well, we'll find them here in the treatment plan. As a nurse, you're concerned about the child's well-being and you're requesting treatment for his recurrent ear infection because it is now affecting his progress at school. You're also requesting that the GP involve a social worker because there are some signs that the child's mother is not looking after him very well. So on test day, you will spend five minutes reading the case notes and thinking about what is relevant and what is irrelevant for the person you are writing to. This is a very important decision because it will affect the assessment of the content of your letter. Looking at the test criteria under content, it says here, all key information is included. You will lose marks if you do not include all the relevant information. So make sure that you understand the full picture and read the notes very carefully. And here, under conciseness and clarity, it says that you must be aware of irrelevant information. You need to consider if the information you have included helps clarify or if it is distracting and could be left out. You will lose marks if you include this unnecessary irrelevant details that the reader would not find useful. Great, we've now analyzed the case notes. If you'd like an extra set of these that you can use to practice and write your own letter, click the link in the description. There, you can download a free PDF containing a new set of case notes. There's also a space for you to write your own sample letter based on the information and writing task featured in these case notes. You'll also get a copy of the sample letter from this video. Let's start writing that letter now. We start by copying the address from the writing task found at the bottom of the case notes. We arrange it here in the top left corner of the letter. Notice that each separate part of the address is on a new line. First, the name of the person you are writing to. The next line, the name of the clinic. If you are given a street name, that would be on the next line. Then, the town or area. Also notice here that in the case notes, you can see commas after Dr. Gregory and after health clinic. But, here in the letter, there are no commas, no punctuation. This is because the letter is a different format to the case notes. The next thing to write is the date. In the exam, the date will be included in your case notes. You can use either British or American Standard date format. In the British format, we put the day before the month, while the American format starts with the month. Both are acceptable, but you need to be consistent throughout your letter. This means that if you are going to write a few dates, use the same format for all of them. So here on the case notes, the day is May 5th, 2018, which is very convenient as both the day and the month are the same number. So I don't have to worry about the format. Now, here on my letter, I've put the day, month, and year all separated by slashes. This is the most commonly used separator in the all numeric date format. You can also use a hyphen or a full stop, but a forward slash is most common. Don't forget to skip a line between the address and the date, just like I've done here. Now, if you are writing out the date in words, use the format day, month, year with no commas, just like how it has been written here in the case notes. I want to emphasize again that it's important to be consistent. Do not mix and match different formats. 
For example, in American English, there is a full stop after titles: Mr., Mrs., Doctor. In British English, there is no full stop after Mr., Mrs., or Doctor. In OET writing, you can either use American or British standard, but it has to be the same throughout your letter. So let's continue with our letter. After the date, we'll skip a line again, and here you have a choice. You can first use the subject line followed by a salutation, or you can write your salutation first and then the subject line. I'm going to start with the subject line. Re stands for regarding. The letter R in re is capital and e is lowercase. After re, you need to use a colon. Now, because our patient is a child, we will write his full name but without the title Mr. If the patient is an adult, you need to use Mr. or Miss or Mrs. in front of the name. After the name, we put a comma and then the age or the date of birth, whatever is in your case notes. For this letter, I put in the patient's name, Jonathan Franks, and his date of birth. Now, after writing the subject of the letter, we skip a line again before writing the salutation. Notice that every section of the letter is separated by a blank line, a line between the address and the date, a line between the date and the subject, a line between the subject and salutation, a line between the salutation and the first sentence, and a blank line between paragraphs. This makes everything look organized and easy to read. We are now ready to write the body of the letter. But remember, when writing the names of places or people from the case notes, pay close attention to the details and copy carefully. Many people make mistakes when copying names from the case notes, and that's a silly way to lose marks. Also notice if the patient is male or female and pay attention to titles, Mr. or Mrs. So let's start writing the body. Here's the first sentence. I am writing to refer your patient, Jonathan Franks, for further assessment and management of his recurrent ear infections. This first sentence in your letter is the purpose of writing. It should tell your reader why you're making the referral. It should be concise and clear and include these four elements. The type of the letter you're writing, the patient's name, what you expect the reader to do, and the patient's main issue or condition. The purpose of writing needs to be clear and should not have any unnecessary extra details. For example, we don't want to include the date of the first presentation or hospitalization. We also don't want to write a very detailed request in the first sentence either because there will be a separate paragraph for the details of the request. Let me show you an example of what not to include in the first sentence. Here's an example that starts well. I'm writing to refer Jonathan Franks. But then we have repeated information. A six-year-old boy. We already know from the date of birth in the subject line that it's a six-year-old boy. There is no need to repeat this information. Any repetition makes your writing less efficient. So we will cross that out. And what about this part? Who was sent to me by his teacher today? Is that a necessary piece of information for the doctor reading the letter or can it be taken out? This is not vital information and it's making our sentence too long and too detailed. So this part will have to go too. What we're left with is a concise and clear first sentence. Remember, you can download this sample letter in addition to a new set of case notes for free by clicking the link in the description. After you have written your first sentence, we skip a line and start our first body paragraph. Here, we need to make a decision about organizing the relevant information in a logical way, as if you're telling your reader a story. In OET letters, the story starts when the patient first presents with a problem, when they see the doctor about this problem for the first time, or when they are hospitalized with a problem. So let's have a look where we start our story about Jonathan. Well, Jonathan's story started when he was sent to the nurse. That's why we're writing this letter. So that's where we need to start. Jonathan presented today with discharge from his left ear along with earache. After that, 
I want to say that this is not the first time the boy has had this problem. So I write, please note that in March, when Jonathan had the same issue, he was prescribed antibiotics. However, on follow-up with his mother, Miss Franks, it became apparent that Jonathan had not completed the course of his medication. I'm using the words, please note, to draw my reader's attention to the fact that this is an ongoing issue. I'm also including the information about the unfinished course of medication as this is a useful detail that has to do with the recurrent infection. As you can see, I put this information into the same paragraph because in our story, there are two issues. The child's ear infection keeps coming back and the child's mother is not doing a great job. Now that these main problems are described, I can go on to other details. In the second body paragraph, I include secondary details. I describe Jonathan's problems at school and his teacher's concern. Recent school assessment results have demonstrated evidence of Jonathan's learning difficulty as well as impaired hearing, especially in a noisy environment. Jonathan is also underweight for his age and teachers have reported that he often arrives at school tired and struggles to concentrate in class. Teachers are concerned about Jonathan's academic progress and general well-being. This is from the case notes here. This information is in note form, but I'm writing a letter and this means I need to write full sentences. These full sentences need to include correct grammar and linking words. The final body paragraph in your letter should be your request paragraph. Everything you're asking them to do should be together in this last paragraph. You must use very polite and formal language in your request. Let's have a look. So the first part of my request is for the treatment of the child's ear infection. I would be grateful if you could evaluate Jonathan's overall health and provide a treatment plan to address the boy's recurrent otitis media. Let's look at this polite language here. I would be grateful if you could this is a grammatical structure called the second conditional, and it is a polite way to ask somebody to do something. So this is the first part of my request. The second part is to ask for help from a social worker. So I write, the family may need assessment by a social worker to provide the necessary support to Ms. Franks to help her care for the child appropriately and to ensure that any treatment plan is followed in its entirety. You can see from this sentence that the social work assessment is linked to the child's health as the two issues are closely related. Now, after you've written your request paragraph, you're almost there. The last sentence of your letter will always be the same. You want to tell the reader that they can contact you if they have any questions. Make sure to put this sentence on a new line, like a separate paragraph. Here it is. If you require further information, please do not hesitate to contact me. Notice that my language is quite formal here. Finally, we need to sign off. A formal convention is to write yours sincerely and don't forget to use a comma after that. On the next line, you write nurse if you're taking this exam for nursing or doctor if you're taking this exam for medicine. Put a full stop after nurse. And there you have it. Your OET letter is done. That wasn't hard, was it? As always, when you finish your writing, don't forget to reread and check everything carefully. You will find typos, spelling mistakes, and other problems, and it's better if you correct those problems before the examiner finds them. Remember, you can download that sample letter and a new set of case notes for free by clicking the link in the description. Now, it's your turn to apply what you have learned here and practice writing your OET letters. Don't forget to submit your practice letters to us at e2testprep.com for fast writing feedback by expert OET teachers. Good luck.